from a whole bunch of churches in the area. So can you just give them a big Some of them said bizarre things like, you know, Danny, that was just his time. Uh, Danny, if it wasn't you, it would have been someone else. Uh, Danny, we all got to go sometime. None of which gave me any peace. But there was a long and hippie guy there, and his name was Wayne. He walked up to me, got in my face, and said, Danny, have you ever tried praying to God? And here I was 28 years old, and I, I said, no. I never went to church. My parents didn't go. I didn't go. And, um, but I remember what he said that night as I laid in my bed, as I had done for a whole year waiting trial. I would think about that day from the beginning to the end. And um, that power had come around the corner and get in the accident. And each time I come to the power, it comes around again. It would go around and around to go to the beginning of the day to the end of the day, back to the beginning, back to the end, and just go around and around, day after day, night after night. And every time I come around that corner, I'm trying to change the ending, and I can't. It's always, it's always the same. So, that night in my bunk, in my cell, I laid there, and it 
was two, three in the morning, I couldn't sleep. I'm thinking about the accident. At times I would envision a dining room table with a woman, two children, and an empty chair. And I just wanted to rip my heart out, roll over and die, because I, I couldn't change what I had done. I couldn't go back and turn the pages, time back, and erase this spot. So, but I remember what the hippie guy said. And so, I looked at the center block wall, and all I said was, God, please, please, God. And inwardly, I was saying, I can't live like this anymore. Um, and all of a sudden, I must have fallen asleep, because the next thing I know, it's morning. The sun's shining, the cell door's opening, it's time for breakfast. So I, I go and go throughout the day, and then a couple days later, the same thing happened. It was late, I couldn't sleep, and I remember what the hippie guy said, and I looked, I looked at the wall, God, please, please, God. And bed, and I fall asleep. I, all of a sudden, it's morning, the door's opening, it's, it's time to get up. And so then I, it was then I made up my mind, I wanted to know more about God, but I didn't know what to do. So I um, knew that everybody who ever talked about God carried a book, so I said, I'm gonna get the book. <laughs> so I, I saw the hippie guy, Wayne, at lunchtime, and I said, hey, you get a Bible? And he said, yeah, I said, you mind if I go He said, wait right here. So he gave me this beat up King Jimmy, and I, I went back to myself. <laughs> And I started to read about Jesus and Nazareth. And I, 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 I was reading it, I fell in love with him. He touches the blind, they see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the winds and seas obey him, and the dead are raised. And so I'm falling in love with him, but he started talking about sin. I started, it, get, it started getting real hot in there because I realized I busted all these laws. And more than once. And it said that these would be cast into outer darkness, you shall be weeping and gnashing your teeth. And I got a picture real quick. I said, he's talking about how I know he is. And so Sunday morning, the officers would open the door and yell, Japo! And these guys said their cell number is 38, 24. So I said, 16. And my door slid open. I followed this crowd down the tier up the stairs to a little chapel on the second floor. And I went in and listened to the preacher and he's talking about Jesus. And, and when he's done, I'm like the last one to leave. And I walk up to him, I said, Chapo, I'm in trouble. He said, what's the matter? I said, we're reading this book. I've been doing all these sins. And it says they're going to be casting out their darkness, weeping, gnashing their teeth. I said, are we talking about hell? He said, yes, we are. You need to be saved. And when he said that, the officer was leading the guys back. He looked at me and motioned with his head and moved it. And the chap said, wait a minute. Do you believe Jesus died for your sins? And I said, yeah, I believe that chap. But look, I get a lot of them. I'm 28 years old. I've been doing this stuff all my life. He said, Jesus Christ died once and for all for the sins of the world. He said, when you go back to your cell, you get on your knees. And you say, God, I know I'm a sinner. But I believe Jesus died for my sins on that cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again. And I want you to come into my life. And I went back to my cell and did that all day long. <laughs> because I was so convicted. And he began to change my life. And he took all of a sudden, the cigarettes didn't feel, didn't taste good. And so I... I didn't know what was going on, so I'm opening my Bible, anything in there about cigarettes, and I, <laughs> there's something about smoking flax in Isaiah, I never tried that. <laughs> but I read this verse in Corinthians, it said, in chapter 6, it said, what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have from God? You are not your own, you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God with your body. And so as I read that and I thought about it, I said, Man, the Holy Spirit's in me, I should be pumping this stuff in. And right at that moment, the guy next door says, hey, you got a snook over there? <laughs> and I says, yeah, you know what? Take him. I, gave, I should have thrown him in the toilet, but I was young. I, I gave him to him and uh, that was it. I never smoked again. And then we went to marijuana and cocaine and, and uh, drinking and drugs, and, and God took all these things away. And then uh, I got out of jail, started going to a good church, and started serving in ministries, and, and felt God's call on my life, and um, I applied for the scholarship uh, for former inmates, and I got a scholarship at Wheaton College in Illinois, and I went and studied Bible and theology for four years, and I was praying, what's your will, Lord? What's your will for my life? I was praying that for a long time, and 
And the chaplain, I was in Illinois, but the chaplain from the jail I was here in Plymouth called me up and said, Danny, they built a new jail back here. And uh, it's four times as big as the old, as the old jail, and it's, and it's not a cockroach in sight. I said, you kidding me? <laughs> the old jail was bad. It was, it was really bad. And, uh, and he said, yeah, they want me to go on full time. And I said, wow, that's great. He said, yeah, but I can't do that. I'm getting too old for this. We've got young gangbangers. He says, uh, we need some young blood here. He said, I called to, you to ask you to pray about coming back. When you come back, finish school, to be the chaplain. I said, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pray about that. So I got off the phone. Told my wife and we prayed about it and I finished school and he helped me with a resume, flew me back for an interview and um, the sheriff said, I understand you're the man for the job, the chaplain speaks very highly of you, I understand you'll be faith funded. I looked at the chaplain and he said, I'll explain that to you. <laughs> so I, I get the job. So I walk out and I said, so what's this faith funded thing? He says, well, remember I told you to trust the Lord? I said, yeah, you always said that. He said, well, this is one of the things you got to trust the Lord. They don't have no money. <laughs> and I said, oh, so I just got a job. I got four children. I'm living with mom and dad, and it doesn't pay. And he said, no, God's going to take care of you. And I said, you're serious? He says, yeah. And he never lied to me. He led me to the Lord. He baptized me. He married me. He discipled me. And he never lied to me. And so he said, uh, by the way, you're preaching next Sunday. I said, oh. <laughs> Uh, what do I say? He said, well, you just tell your story, tell them what you're going to be doing, and, and um, you know, so I did. And after the service, there were people that shook my hand and gave me these checks, and, and the church said, we're going to start supporting you, and all of a sudden, I, I, I'm realizing, wow. He said, I told you, God's going to provide for you, and you're going to be at this church. And so I did this, and so for 27 years, I've been uh, at the <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming.